All right, it is 3.10, we'll get started. Welcome everyone to a fashion forward approach to styling Sakai lessons pages. This presentation is being recorded. Everyone is muted on entry. I'm gonna ask that you keep your microphone muted unless you're asking questions, just to avoid background noise. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat and I'll relay them. We're gonna be saving all questions until the end of the presentation. Again, welcome to a fashion forward approach to styling Sakai lessons pages presented by Stephanie Laurent and Megan Griffin. Stephanie is a senior instructional technologist at Marist College. She holds a degree in instructional design, development and evaluation. In her role, she works to support Marist faculty in their use of Sakai and is passionate about showing them innovative ways to utilize Sakai in engaging and interactive ways. Her areas of interest are constructing engaging faculty development within Sakai, implementing content authoring, and designing visually appealing self-paced courses for the Marist faculty. Megan is a sophomore at Marist College, double mentor, or sorry, double majoring in public relations and fashion merchandising with a minor in graphic design. She's always been inspired by color and texture and is fascinated by the role that visual communication through advertising and public relations play in the fashion industry. Megan is able to use her design skills and her interest in visual communication as a student worker on the web design team in digital education at Marist College, where she helps design courses and explore the various design aspects of Sakai. After her time at Marist, Megan hopes to pursue a career in public relations for fashion brands. Ladies, I'll hand this over to you. Thank you. All right, Megan, we're just gonna start with the background. Welcome everyone to our presentation. Um, we will start to tell you what we will cover. So what we will cover is a background as to why we saw the need to start looking into developing a style guide. We will talk about creating a style guide and we will talk about utilizing the style guide to create a self-paced course and also utilizing the style guide to create a virtual exhibition. All right, so a little bit about the background. So we noticed that faculty were experiencing uh, some difficulty in their course site creation process. We saw that some used Sakai tools in a minimal capacity or hesitated to venture into new tools. So we wondered how were faculty perceiving some of these tools um, as tools for engagement within the learning management system. And so we desired to show them that Sakai tools could be uh, very valuable in creating engagement and streamlining course content. So um, in order to address some of these issues, we decided pre the pandemic um, season to create um, some in-person workshops. Um, and so we developed a series of in-person workshops to make the process of developing a course site feel less overwhelming. So as you can see on the right, we have a list of some of our workshops. There are more to present, but we could only fit but so much in this slide. But you'll see our various um, uh, workshop tracks, as well as you can notice that we developed a virtual badge system to incentivize faculty, as you'll see the badges next to the titles. And we also track their progress towards a badge um, after a specific series of workshops were attended. What we were noticing in implementing our um, workshops were that a disproportionate amount of faculty were reaching out for help than were attending the workshops. Um, some signed up to attend, but later were not able to for a variety of reasons. And so it, it clicked to us that we, we needed as a department to find uh, a way to create convenient, accessible workshops um, to increase attendance. So that led to us uh, deciding that we wanted to adapt a lot of our um, in-person workshops to an online format. And we thought that a good way to do this would be um, by using Sakai lessons pages um, and other tools that are in Sakai as well to conduct these workshops. And so um, when thinking about developing the style guide, we thought about what, what the purpose would be. Um, a couple of purposes we came up with was that there were a variety of workshops that uh, needed to be adapted to an online format, as you saw. Um, 
we also saw that we needed to create distinctions in look and feel of the course content that just went beyond that the titles are different. Um, we wanted uh, the users to experience different things when they went through different workshops. And also we thought that it was important to create the style guide because we wanted to create a process that would allow for replication of future course sites or future workshop course sites um, to be sped up. So if we wanted to create more workshops down the line for our faculty in an online format, we needed the style guide as a way to make that process go a bit faster. And so it led us to develop the style guide. Where we started with developing the style guide was first creating a prototype a prototype in Microsoft Word. So it started with open up a, a, work, a Microsoft Word document um, we chose standard colored ideas. We look for buttons and banners in the forms of Microsoft Word shapes. Um, we uh, chose some standardized font pairings um, and created some placeholder text as well as uh, placeholder shapes. As you can see on the right, this is our Microsoft um, Word prototype. So that eventually led us to now adapt that prototype into Sakai. So uh, uh, as a result of that, the DE style guide, DE short for digital education um, style guide was formed. And basically it's a master course site within Sakai that contains all preferred themes, colors, fonts, um, and lessons pages that can easy, easily be replicated and imported into another course. Um, so we created a, a variety of different color schemes um, as far as themes is concerned. Um, and we um, said that each site theme would correspond to a different workshop track. Um, we realized through the process of creating this style guide that um, adapting these workshops to an online format was very beneficial because it allowed for simpler tracking of workshop completion. Uh, we could go into the roster and see who signed up to participate in the workshop. We were able to collect statistics and also feedback. And so when we began actually developing the pieces of the style guide, we went through different phases. So I'll take you through some of them. The first uh, phase was just breaking down the visual elements. So we created an area within the style guide that contained um, our site themes font, color, and it helped us to basically visualize um, what we wanted our workshops to look like um, before actually placing in the course content. So you'll see on the right, that's our area for um, all of our site themes. And then you'll see our site themes on display here. So we chose uh, six baseline themes. You'll see only three represented here, but we range from colors red, orange, green, silver, gold, and purple. And these are some of um, the layouts we have as far as color schemes go. Next, the next phase was to determine the flow and the course organization. Um, how would the user go from beginning to end of the course? So we started by creating a start here page, uh, which was a series of lesson pages that um, introduced the participant to the key workshop information, um, frequently asked questions, and allowed them to meet the team. Then we moved on over to create a begin course section. And in the begin course section, um, that was basically a lessons page that contained a modular format for course content. And then finally, we move over to the actual course modules themselves. So when they click on module one, we had to develop um, sub pages and design them so that the user could easily go through each part of the course content. Another phase of our development of the um, style guide was to think about adding buttons and banners. Um, so we believe that buttons and banners are really um, important in that they provide direction and navigational ease for the end user. So we started to incorporate things like CSS as a, as a department, we started to look into CSS um, as a way to basically create these buttons and banners and make it so that we can easily change those colors based on the themes for each workshop. And then finally, 
we had to decide on a flow or design for the actual module page. So when um, the participant clicks on module one, we needed to design the page for how they would move through the content. So we decided on having the module include a banner uh, with the title of the module. Um, in the middle, a placeholder we placed there for any course content. In our case, we used H5P, but anything could be placed in there as far as course content is concerned. Um, we, on the bottom left, we have a checklist for assignments or any, um, any if, if the after participants um, completed something, they would just check it off. Um, in the middle, we have um, an additional resources section to link any files from the resources or any videos, um, external links and um, anything of that nature to give the participant a deeper dive into the content. And then we have on the um, bottom right, an area for assignments. And so this would be an area where we would link any assignments created um, in Sakai. So this was built to be for the workshops that were developed within digital education. But once we shifted into the pandemic and had to shift into a virtual format, this took on a completely new meaning for us. Many of the departments on campus really wanted to create an asynchronous virtual solution to what they had been doing face-to-face, -face, their own workshops for faculty, presenting series of resources and all kinds of things that had been done in person that now needed to be shifted. So we now had this process that had been developed before we even knew any of this was going to happen, which helped us really work through all of the courses that we've developed together within the past few months. So we start always by using the style guide to create a prototype. Because we have these standardized layouts, it makes it a little easier for us to show all of these different departments what really should be included in something to make it fully comprehensive and to make sure that it includes all of the elements that they may need to utilize. From there, we work with them to determine all of the direction of the content and make sure that we're able to include everything necessary. And then we start adjusting the prototype to recreate a logical layout for all of the content and determine all of the Sakai tools that will need to be included within modules. After that, we create the theme, which is always my favorite part as a fashion student. And then we get to revise and finalize, which is probably the longest part of the process, but we've created some really amazing things. And now Stephanie will talk about how we applied that. Right, so uh, the style guide was very useful for us in a variety of ways. One way we will discuss is how we applied it to creating a self-paced course. All right, so um, as we all know, the pandemic has caused uh, colleges across the country to make shifts in their teaching modalities for fall 2020. Um, and so in order to shift, uh, it was important that faculty were trained on how um, to adapt to new forms of, of teaching their students. And so there, as, as we used the style guide earlier, we used it for differentiation of our in-person workshops. Um, and then they came in need during this time as well. We used it um, in our collaboration with the Department of Academic Learning to design a three-week asynchronous uh, training course uh, on the use of hybrid instruction for fall 2020. And Megan will go into detail on how we went about doing that. So after creating the style guide, this was really one of the first opportunities that we had to apply that whole process. So we showed them one of the prototypes that had been made in developing the style guide. So this was a modular layout that included multiple modules with sub pages for all of the modules where they could present all of the content that they may need within this course. This was what they ultimately ended up choosing for the course. And we were very happy that this could include so much information because although we didn't know exactly what kind of content would need to be included, we knew that it would need to be extremely comprehensive. So from there, we really got to work with them to determine the direction of all of the content that would be included in the course. We worked with the Department of Academic Learning through meetings to develop all of the content. And as the content continued to develop, we had to determine the number of modules and exactly what would need to be included in each, breaking down assignments, external resources, and really anything that could be used to make sure that the content was really, really uh, used to cover everything that would be necessary. 
So this is an example of one of those module pages fully filled in with all of the content. We used an H5P slider to be able to present some of the content as well as the learning outcomes and instructions. From there, we got to adjust the prototype to create a logical layout for the content. And we started determining all of the Sakai tools. So because we were working through this as the college was still kind of deciding how to proceed with the fall 2020 semester, the content was continuing to change and develop with every day as we were building the course. And we had to change the layout of the individual modules as well to really figure out how to incorporate all of this different content and all of the different elements that we were being given. So the content helped us determine what kinds of tools should be included in the course. And some of the external tools we chose to use included H5Ps, links to external resources and videos embedded within the course. And then Sakai tools were really used to reinforce all of the content that was being provided. So we included forums, assignments, peer review. We utilized the signup tool for Zoom meetings, Panopto videos and surveys within tests and quizzes. From there, we had to figure out ways to incorporate each tool into the lessons page and create fully comprehensive lessons pages. And this is really where my role as a fashion student starts to come in because I do have an eye for visual communication and I've also been trained within my courses as to what works within a website and what doesn't. And this really helps me lay out something that's clean and very visually pleasing and comprehensive. So this is kind of how we adjusted the prototype within two different module pages to help fit all of the content that needed to be included in this large course. So this was the first module, which was about course and lesson learning outcomes. So we have all of the learning outcomes at the top and the instructions. And then from there, we have an H5P slider, which presents a lot of the content that needed to be included within this module. And we utilize that checklist, the course design ebook, additional resources, and a section for all of the assignments where we utilize forums and an assignment that was color coded through the course and helped us determine some of the colors for each of the individual modules. This is the second module, which was about adding assessment into your hybrid course. And this had a lot of content. So we needed to reorganize our layout to break it down a little bit further. We still have the learning outcomes, the instructions, and the H5P because we wanted to make sure that the layout made sense within the course. You don't want to create something so different that the faculty will be confused within each module, but we wanted to create something that had everything they would need. So we still utilize that checklist, additional resources, and the assignments, but we also added in buttons for additional subpages to be able to walk them through all of the content and create something that was really easy to navigate. Then we got to create the theme, which is always my other favorite part of developing a course. So as the content continued to develop, the Department of Academic Learning decided to change the theme of the course on us. And they renamed it the Hybrid with a Twist of Lemon course because these courses would need to be adjusted beyond the traditional hybrid format. They needed to be able to go fully online if necessary. And this was a really fun theme, which allowed us to do a lot with color, with font, with graphics. And that is kind of how we work to develop it. So each module received a different baking related theme, which worked into all of the content that we wrote and helped us develop everything used throughout. So each module had a different pastel color scheme to create some visual separation and kind of help break up the course and maintain some visual engagement including purple, green, yellow, royal blue, and gray. And these colors were influenced, as I mentioned before, by a color-coded assignment that was completed throughout the course. So like I said, continuing that visual continuity within each module. Then we worked with a graphic designer from another academic department to develop some of the most important design aspects, including special banners and graphics that really contributed to the overall look of the course. So this is how it was utilized within the hybrid instruction with a twist of lemon. This is the introduction page taken beyond the banner that we had before with the incredible banner that the graphic designer helped create. And it's really something eye catching that draws you into the course. And it was something that most of our faculty had never seen done within a Sakai site before. So it was really awesome to be able to introduce this idea that we could go beyond what was typically expected within a Sakai site. We still have that video that we had the placeholder for as well as the introduction text. 
And then below this is an example of how the content was kind of presented within a module. So we have our H5P to present that content. And this is just a little example of how the theme played into the graphics. So this is a GIF with a chef who has a lemon in his hand. And again, just contributing to that theme as well as the colors that were used. So this was the introduction where we utilized that yellow that would play in through the rest of the course. And then this is what that modular layout that we showed you before became once the theme was fully worked into it. The graphic designer created some incredible banners as well as graphics that really played in with the different baking related themes for each module. And then we worked together to adjust the fonts, adjust the colors, um, and adjust the buttons through the CSS, as Stephanie mentioned earlier. And now Stephanie will talk about another way we applied the style guide. All right. Another way we applied the style guide was through the creation of a virtual exhibition, which we will talk you through right now. All right, so senior students within the honors uh, program at Marist uh, will present a wide variety of final honors thesis projects um, at some point in December. Um, and usually that um, event is held in person with a large number of faculty and students gathered together to view exhibits and um, you know, provide feedback on different exhibits. But due to the social distancing regulations, that um, plan has changed a bit. And so the honors director um, approached us to uh, design a asynchronous online exhibit solution. And Megan will talk you through the details of that. Now, this was completely different from a regular course, and it was completely different from anything that we had developed before. So we had to work a little bit backwards and determine the direction of the content before we even got into developing the prototype. Again, because we had no idea what to expect. So the honors director's only specification when this was first handed to us was that she needed a way for students to be able to share their projects in something that looked clean and professional in an asynchronous format, which allowed students and faculty members to comment. So at first, we really didn't know how we would go about this. And we decided to explore both external tools and tools within Sakai to be able to figure out what would need to be presented within the prototype. So we spent a week discussing forums, we worked through the commons tool, and eventually we decided on the student page tool, which has a comments capability that could be utilized in order to present this. And we also knew this would give students the opportunity to create something that was a little bit unique, where they had their own page and they could present beyond just kind of handing the content to the faculty and students visiting. However, this posed an entirely different problem because most of the students at Marist have never had the opportunity to develop their own lessons page or their own student page. So we had to figure out how to help them figure that out. We decided to create two prototypes, a set of instructional videos for students, which would be on a page specifically for the students that could later be hidden once the exhibit opened up. And then we needed a page for the actual presentation of the thesis exhibit. And from there, we got to work backwards to start developing our prototype, which was a little bit more comprehensive because we had already determined the direction of the content. So this was where we started with the prototype for the honors exhibit page. And we applied that modular layout that we've been using as a result of the style guide throughout the courses. So you can see here that we have this banner. This is the opening page that we had developed as a part of the prototype. We have our banner to give the viewers a sense of exactly what they're looking at, as well as a video and some text introducing them to what exactly would be done within the honors thesis exhibit. From there, we have seven academic schools at Marist. So we used images as well as a button that would take them to a sub page where the student thesis projects would be featured. Then we developed two possible layouts for what that page would look like. So our first was just a list of the student pages with their names, something very simple, very clean, that would be very easy for the faculty to navigate. The second one was a little bit more comprehensive and had pictures of each of the students, as well as text that included their major, their project, and their faculty advisor. Below that, we would have a section for each of them to add their individual student page. Then we created a prototype for the instructions page. 
So first we talked through exactly what need, would need to be included to help students set up their own lessons page. We decided on a video that would help them embed a, all of the information that they might need and help them set up a template using the template feature within Sakai 20. Then the second set of videos walked them through embedding all different kinds of content into their student page. And we knew we would record each of these, but we started with just placeholders to show off in the prototype. And again, I had a lot of fun with the fonts on this, which again comes from the fashion viewpoint. From there, we went back in and started adjusting the prototype to create a logical layout for all of the content. But this process was a little bit different, again, because we had already determined all of the Sakai tools that we would need. And the prototype already included all of that, which made the alterations a lot easier for us to work through. But after we created our prototype, the honors director created a prototype using Wix to show her students um, and show us how she wanted the attendees to experience the course and really walk us through what that user experience would be like. So this page really featured a landing page which took you to an enter lobby, a lobby that looked similar to what we had developed, but had been adjusted a little bit to look a little bit more clean and a little bit more professional. And then taking students to a sub page for each different school, which would have places for them to add their student pages and all of their information. So this is what that Wix prototype looked like. This is the lobby that was originally developed just with the image that says honors thesis virtual event and a button to enter the lobby. This is what that lobby page began to look like, which has all of the different academic schools and buttons below, stretching the whole page just to create something that you can scroll through that really looks very clean. And then from there, she created a set of pages within each academic school that looked very similar to what we had developed. So they had images for each student, as well as sections for their major, their project, and their faculty member, and then a button for attendees to view the projects. And from there, they'd be able to go in, see the content included, and comment. Now, we had to recreate that user experience from the Wix prototype within Sakai. So we developed a series of lessons pages using various design elements that we had previously included within Sakai, like buttons and fonts. And then we got to have a little fun with the theme again. So as we adjusted the prototype to provide the same user experience given to us, we got to work with our graphic designer again, who works within the School of Professional Programs at the school, again, going to that interdepartmental aspect here to create all of the necessary images and banners within the site. I am an honor student at the college, and I know that this event carries a lot of prestige. So we worked to create something that was very clean, very professional, and really reflected the prestige that this event holds when it is in person. So this is what that student page to help them set up their instructions ultimately ended up looking like. It sticks with kind of the basic theme that we utilize throughout a, a lot of our courses that comes from the style guide, adjusting the colors of the banners, um, but we got to present that step-by-step -step instruction. We got to show them the videos. They have all that source code that they can copy right into their site to utilize that template feature. And then once we discussed with the honors director what kind of content they would need, I was able to record videos to show them how to embed a YouTube video and a PDF file. So this is just one of the final Sakai products that was created to help the students learn how to set up their own student pages and move through the course. Now this is the final Sakai product of what that actual honors thesis looked like. And it looks incredible. We were very excited about the way this came out. So this is a graphic that is in that enter lobby page now, the landing page that they first enter on. We got to develop this blue, work together on that. And then we added the gold leaves as a way to kind of, again, reflect the prestige of the event and that academic ideal. From there, we changed all of the buttons within CSS to match this blue and just carry that visual continuity throughout the site. And once you enter the lobby, you're taken to a page that looks like this. It's headed by a banner that really kind of reflects what you saw on that landing page, so you know exactly what you're looking at. And then beneath that is a lot of the text just explaining what this virtual thesis exhibit looks like. Beneath this part mm -hmm. of the lessons page, you have a series of banners for each of the seven academic schools, and then buttons to take you to the page where the students are presenting their own pages. And this is an example of what one of those pages looks like. 
So this is for the School of Communications and the Arts. Each page has a banner that looks very similar, but has their own set of gold leaves, their own icon, again, to create some of that visual continuity using the color scheme and the gold leaves and bringing it through while also creating some separation so that you know you're not looking at the same school as you did two minutes ago when you were exploring different student pages. Now we have all of the students laid out. We have all of their images laid out with their information below and the place for them to add their student pages. Students have recently started adding all of their student pages and adding all of their content. And we are very pleased with the way that the instruction pages and the template features are working so far. Now, ultimately, the style guide really helped us create a streamlined, innovative process that was fashion forward because we didn't know just how important it would be a few months after creating the style guide. This process could be easily applied to a variety of courses once we had to switch into a virtual format. And it was so useful beyond the course of what had originally been intended for this. We really could not be happier with the fact that we developed this without even knowing what would happen a few months later. And now Stephanie will wrap up. Okay, and to conclude, um, I want to quote uh, Richard Buchanan, a professor of design management and information systems, and he said it best, that a good design can be defined not only to be creative, stylish with an extraordinary visual look, but it must consider human engagement in its activities. And so I hope that you can glean from this presentation that the capabilities of lessons pages can expand beyond the basic functionality of Sakai. They can include creative and colorful elements while utilizing all of the Sakai tools to create visually engaging user-friendly courses, virtual exhibits, uh, virtual exhibits and workshops. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a couple questions. Sure. Um, Tanko said they also use HP, H5P, but um, on course duplication, the content needs to be relinked. He wanted to know if you guys also had that prop had the, that experience. So we we did not experience having to relink um, when we created our H five P's. Um, so we use the the Marist version um, of H five P. We make the content public and we use the embed code to place on a lessons page. And so every time you um, basically duplicate your lessons page for next semester or whatever you're using it for, it comes over as well. So we haven't experienced that. Okay. And then Kurt wanted to know at which point in the design process did you consider accessibility of the template? Yeah. And we piggybacked onto that to ask if it was, uh, the colors were checked with a contrast checker since some of the yellow and white looks like it might be hard to read. Understood. And and I, I was seeing some of that. And thank you so much for your feedback. So the part in which uh, we consider all of these things, Megan um, referenced the revise, 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 and finalize. As we're learning more and to incorporate different accessible components, we are refining these things. So with presentations like this, with um, meetings with our Office of Accommodations, we are checking for all of these things and making revisions. Um, you'll see that the first self-paced course, we had to really get that up and going really, really quickly. Um, but we are making, uh, we are refining it. We are refining colors. We're checking for uh, accessible components like adding captions to pictures and adding um, caption, closed captioning to our videos as well. So we are considering all those things in the revising process. 